Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be continuing our search to try to find the best resin 3D printer for printing jewelry. Uh, looking at print quality, print consistency, value for print, and uh, up to bat today is Rosen. So we wanted to be upfront before we even really begin this video with this disclaimer that this machine was provided to us uh, as part of a brand campaign. However, we had the opportunity to pick from anything we wanted from the online store, and we thought that the Frozen Sonic Mini 8K had the most promising specifications. Now, let me tell you why. I believe that this machine is the highest resolution resin 3D printer currently available to consumers and quite possibly even to professionals. The Frozen Sonic Mini has a 7.1 inch LCD panel sporting an incredible 7,500 by 3,240 pixels which is pretty mind-blowing. Uh, this equals out to a XY pixel resolution of 22 microns, which for reference is about three times smaller than the average human hair. So we're talking incredibly fine details. And of course, as jewelers, we love details. Details are what make or break a really great design. And because details are something that get lost inevitably during all of the manufacturing processes, such as molding, uh, if necessary, uh, casting to some degree, and especially polishing where we're actively removing metal from the surface, it's especially important that we have as much details as early on as possible. A machine with this kind of resolution should give us the best possible chance of having that detail early on. So in order to fully show off and appreciate those details, we reached out to Bluecast and asked if we could try out one of their brand new revisions of a product that you may have heard of, that being X Filigree. So let's get these back to where the rest of our printers live and we'll do our first prints and get this all calibrated. X Filigree is a modified version of Bluecast X1. Um, I believe X1 to be, in my personal opinion, and of course many others, X1 is one of the kings of castables right now. So that this is basically that, but with a little bit added hardener or something, I'm not a chemist. By combining the resolution of the Sonic Mini 8K with X Filigree, my hope is that we'll be able to see exceptional print detail specifically on the surface and around curves, which ultimately will of course mean less post-processing uh, during the finishing, uh, taking you know the polishing stage, which also lowers the manual labor, which lowers cost of materials, which ultimately, hopefully, means that it's a cheaper product in theory. So setup as per many printers these days is pretty simple. We simply leveled the bed as per the instructions, peeled off any remaining protective films, and added the machine to our favorite slicer. In this case, I'm using Lychee Slicer because it has a few functions that I deem necessary for printing filigree items like this. To print these filigree objects on Prusa Slicer or Chidu Box would require basically like a forest of support columns around the object. Um, which, of course, would probably ruin the object when it's finally printed, trying to remove them. In Lychee, we can use the fan support function, which, of course, saves us tons of material and adds very delicate supports exactly where we need them. Configuring Lychee Slicer with Bluecast X Filigree for the Sonic Mini 8K was pretty simple because Bluecast has already developed several solid print profiles for pretty much all of their resins on many of the resin 3D printers available on the market. Now, I know we're here talking about the Sonic Mini 8K, but just for funsies, we wanted to show you guys the visual difference between what an 8K panel looks like compared to other resolutions on the market, uh, that being 4K, and 2K. For the 4K printer, we used the official X filigree settings. Uh, however, on the 2K machine, I was only able to find the Bluecast X1 resin profile because they just don't have one yet for X filigree. So how exactly am I going to show you what a 22 micron pixel looks like? Well, I have this little uh, toy here. This is a tiny macro video camera that's just USB. Um, I apologize to those of you who are watching this in 4K resolution as we normally film in. Uh, this one is, I think, 720, so the video quality might be a little bit low. But even though the resolution is pretty low coming off of this camera, you can still really see the difference between a 2K, 4K, and an 8K panel. By the way, if you're interested in having one of these cameras for your own use, if you're interested in seeing, you know, print quality at a very, very close up scale, uh, I'll put the link in the description below. So let's take a look at these prints. Now we're gonna start with the 8K filigree, the, the one that everyone really wants to see here. 
I'm blown away by how crisp the little balls are. Um, I, I don't have an exact measurement for how large those are, but they are very tiny, like pinhead size. Now this is still the 8K, but we're moving into a different area. Again, you can only really see the layer lines. I'm looking particularly at all of the curves. I'm looking for pixels, and I don't see any. And look at this tiny little hole. So tiny, but it came out really nice. So now by contrast, let's look at the 2K. This is the stone setting on one of the other prints, and these look pretty gnarly. All the pixel jagged lines are in there. You can especially see them around the curves. Now, I do have to reiterate, of course, that we print on a 2K machine frequently, and I'm actually still happy with my casting results, but it's become abundantly clear as we look that there are greater levels of finish to be had here. This is the 8K version of that stone setting, same piece, and it's only the layers. We can't see any pixelation whatsoever. Now let's go back to the 2K, but around a larger stone setting. You can see, again, a lot of those voxel pixel lines. And again, I'm looking at the center of this stone setting where it's circular, and we see quite a lot of jagged lines. And now on to the 4K version. Not bad, not bad. We can still see some of the pixels, but mostly just layers. And here's the 8K version, and it's just flawless. Look at how clean that center circle is. There's just not a, a hint of a pixel whatsoever. It's absolutely stunning. So let's go back to the beginning of the video and answer that original question. Is this the best 3D printer for printing jewelry? In my opinion, this printer is excellent. I feel like for most jewelers on the market, this is definitely going to be one of the most compelling options that you can possibly pick. However, it really does depend on your needs. As the name implies, the Sonic Mini, if the bed size doesn't really fit with what you're making, say you want to, want to make chains, or if you're like us and you want to print uh, large earrings or something, or fully assembled, cast, ready to cast trees, this machine might be a little bit too small for your needs and you may need to consider something a little bit larger. In our short time with this machine so far, uh, we have not had any print failures, and we haven't had to redo any either. That isn't to say that you'll never, ever have a print failure on this machine. It's, it's not performing miracles or anything. And then I guess the more encompassing question is in terms of value for print, with the print quality and consistency being so high, coupled with relatively affordable um, replacement parts like the LCD panel, costs about 180 bucks, and the printer itself costing 700 USD, there are very few situations where I could imagine that this machine in a jewelry business would not be able to pay for itself incredibly quickly. So now a question for you guys, the viewers. Um, if you're running a jewelry business, what are you looking for in a resin 3D printer? Do you prioritize bed size, print resolution, print speed? Uh, let us know down in the comments because we're really curious. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.